Black Ops 4 and more specifically, Blackout will have a free to play time trial lasting one week starting tomorrow and going until the 24th as of next Thursday. So that said, we're probably going to be seeing a large influx of players. And with that, having spent around three to four days played, if I'm not mistaken already with Blackout alone and it going free to play tomorrow, I figured we'd discuss some general tips on what not to do with the game mode and take a look at 10 of the most common mistakes Blackout players will make. And so by discussing these, hopefully it can maybe Maybe allow you to introspectively look at your gameplay and make the adjustments according so that you can become even better than you may already be. That said, this goes for veteran or brand new players because truthfully, I'll find myself doing this stuff all the time still. I'll make these mistakes and correct myself mid game or maybe I don't and I end up dying as a result. That said, before we jump into it, let me know if you guys would like to see more blackout focused content in the future. I legitimately love the mode, but dealing with a lot of current events in COD, I'd love to be able to drop you guys some of my other favorite parts of the game if you're willing to see it and possibly learn from new content as well. And also, if you guys wanna follow me over on Twitch, I'm gonna be live streaming a lot more in particular, black Blackout over there, so that link will be down there in the description below if you guys want to go toss a follow and maybe come say hi, check it out, all that good stuff, and maybe even as of you watching this video, might be live over there. So come say hi, toss a follow, all that good stuff, but into the mistakes that you may or may not make. Firstly, let's talk about the very beginning of the game. Blackout doesn't have a perfect scenario of every drop rate being right down the center. If that was the case, that'd be fantastic because then every single POI or maybe even the smaller huts that aren't labeled will have the equal spread of players about them. But with a lot of the drop zones being in the four corners of the maps and cutting out a large portion of the across the map locations, don't be afraid to stretch the following zone. A lot of players will stick just to that and drop along the lines, but if you end up going outwards and challenging yourself to stretch a little bit further while you might get there a little bit later you also might be uncontested for the loot you may find and also have a lot of different options available in terms of either setting up for a zone that may be coming or strategically planning your next move so don't feel limited just by where that drop zone may take you feel free to traverse the map and drop maybe a little bit of a stretch towards the opposite end if need be Second mistake up on this list that I see a lot of players doing is looting too much at the very beginning. One of my biggest tips is loot fast and don't pass. So whenever you jump in, if you say land construction, it's probably going to be a hot drop and heavily contested by many other players. So therefore you wanna get the quickest engagements out of the way so that you can start cleaning up and getting everything with that. Whatever you end up finding first, whether that be an RK7 pistol, a strife pistol, a shotgun, pick it up, especially in those hot drops. Don't be too picky because if you are, you might run into somebody who got a luckier drop than you or picked up that first weapon they saw and therefore you might get taken out. Killing players and then gradually gaining your loot will make for a more fluent experience not only but as well give you the edge needed in staying alive and sustaining yourself early game. So if you found that MOG-12, use it to take out the guy with the ICR, build up that rifle, then maybe use the rifle at a little bit of a longer range to pick off a tactical rifle or a sniper and then you can end up working your way through better loot. Third mistake that I see commonly and is one that honestly I was guilty of for the longest time but then started to transition because it has some great benefits is that players will pass up golden guns. Even if it's not the weapon that you care about, pick it up and detach it. On console, you can end up picking it up, going into your inventory and holding your square button. You can do the same very easily on PC. It's just the middle scroll wheel, if I'm not mistaken. And then it drops every attachment plus the weapon. So therefore you can just simply pick up that golden gun, detach it, pick up the weapon you had beforehand and then attach whatever attachments came with it onto your already preferred weapon if you end up having that. For whatever reason, I feel like I found, say things like the golden Mazu tenfold compared to others. And while it's not a weapon that I'll use, I still can end up kidding out my SWAT, my ICR, my Maddox, my ABR, whatever it is, it's still worth the pickup at least just to detach it and make your weapon better in the process, even if it's not something like a Golden Paladin, which is in my books already one of the best weapons for situational use in Blackout. If you find things like a Golden Paladin or a Golden ICR, that's absolutely fantastic, but chances are you're gonna find some of the other weapons you might not be too keen on, but still pick them up to take the attachments. Now, talking about some of the engagements at hand, once you finally get into some gunfights here, the biggest thing that I can say is patience is key. One of the big mistakes that I end up seeing is that players will first spot an enemy and take a shot at them wildly. That said, whenever you consider some of the factors, it might not be the best play. For example, if you see a player off in the distance and you aren't confident that you'll land that sniper shot, that you'll land that first shot of your tactical rifle or just your regular rifle, 
don't force it. Don't try and make something out of something that may not be there because in Blackout, where information and positioning is absolutely everything, if you give away your positioning by shooting, there may be that only one person you're looking at or there could be a swarm of 10 people in the immediate vicinity that are alerted of your presence because you shot. So make sure that you have that shot lined up, be patient with it and then take it once you're fully confident or can end up moving into a position in which you're better suited to take the engagement. And that's another big thing that I end up seeing is another mistake being positioning is absolutely key players sometimes will take that engagement and not really consider the other factors such as the area and whereas in games like Fortnite you can build and make your own cover blackout is a lot more tactical in the sense that you only have the environment to use to your advantage so if you're on a tree line make sure you have all positions covered and you can end up taking some sort of cover if you experience return fire but perhaps the biggest factor that is available whenever it comes to positioning is high ground whether that be early game where my preferred favorite example of this is the very tip top of construction where you can overlook the entire top floor and have some positional cover based off the walls that go up or say you land the roof of train yard where there's actually a relatively decent amount of loot that spawns up there you can look down on everybody else and get not only the information of where they are but also you have the high ground and therefore better positioning it's much tougher for them to end up killing you because unless they land a few headshots consecutively that you cannot react to you can just back up and they have no real way to challenge you whenever you go to heal environmentally as well High ground also works if you end up having the ability to gain a high ground by either being over a cliffside or a higher hill positioning. Fighting upwards is always harder than fighting downwards. So that's something that if you can gain that high ground, makes you do it and don't neglect your positioning in blackout. Once you do finally secure those kills, however, the biggest thing that I can tell you is don't overvalue that loot. Don't become a loot goblin. One of the biggest things I always have to fight with myself is getting in and out of death stashes relatively quick. On PC, it may not be as bad, but whenever you end up going into console versions, whenever you're looting, it is something that you're very exposed. You can't move as much as you can on PC to wiggle around. And while a UI update drastically made looting much easier and much more effective, it is still something that you're still relatively in danger while sitting there and looting for 10 or 15 seconds. So have an idea of what you want from that player that you just got, whether that be, say, the level three armor you killed and can then take from them to repair, or they had a paladin or a sniper of some sorts that you want for long range engagements, or if you just want the ammunition and the health they had, have a relative idea of what you want in mind before going into that bag so you can get it and get out. One thing rolling into mid and late game that I end up seeing players do a lot is holding on to a vehicle for too long. That being the next mistake here that I want to kind of talk about, because while vehicles are absolutely great for outrunning the storm, if you're at the very edge and the far end of where you need to be, the storm will come in a lot faster compared to the closer portions. Vehicles are fantastic for that, and even in mid game they can be fantastic in scoping out where players will be by having a little bit more cover as well especially if you're in say an ARAV or an armored truck but come late game they become something that are more of a hindrance and a liability they not only make a ton of noise and give away your positioning but they also are a big target and while you might be able to fire back at somebody in say an ARAV all it takes is one mesh mine or one cluster grenade stuck to that to blow you to oblivion and end your streak so while it might vary depending on the zone the type of player you feel you are and how aggressive you want to be I'd end up, say, ditching that truck after the second, maybe third zone so that you can then get a feel of stealth play and taking out players just on your own and not making too much noise in the process. And after you ditch that vehicle, what should you do? Another common mistake I end up seeing is players more so going to the center of the zone rather than literally anywhere else. The biggest thing here with this is that you open yourself up to 360 degrees of return fire or incoming fire from enemies, and that's literally impossible to cover all in one shift of your view. Unless you're spinning in circles and constantly watching the movement on the perimeters, it is something you won't be able to end up effectively countering any engagement that comes your way. Instead, the best way to take this is to end up rolling the edge of the zone as it comes in. I'm not saying to camp on the edge of the zone, but I'm simply saying to patrol that perimeter. Chances are you're not going to have players coming out of zone every engagement, so therefore, if the zone is to your back, at the very most, at any given point, you'll have 180 degrees of your field of view to account for whenever looking for enemies. And if that's the case, then you're going to be able to cover that in one swift swivel of your analog stick or your mouse. And while, yes, you'll want to push up a little bit so you're not necessarily riding the tail of the zone, zone, it might increase that field of view a little bit more, but at least gives you a little bit more of a heads up as to limiting where those engagements will come from. It's completely cutting off anything from your back, or hopefully should, again, unless there's that rare occasion somebody is completely camping in zone or somehow flanks you while you're rolling in as well. 
Outside of that though, if you get into these later game engagements, a lot of the times I'll see people scramble and panic and somehow corner themselves in. That's a big thing you want to avoid because cornering yourself is a bad engagement. You end up allowing your enemy to have complete control of the situation and unless they colossally mess up, they should be able to take you out. One example we'll get into in our final mistake here in this is a scenario in which players I was going up against locked themselves into a bathroom. It was a 1v2 and you'll see later on in the clip that I end up winning that gunfight in a 1v2, but that's due simply because they cornered themselves in. They didn't give themselves an escape plan, so if it's at all possible, always have an escape route, always have something you can fall back onto. So if that gunfight becomes a little too overwhelming, you can retreat back, heal, and then refocus and regroup, maybe even reposition. The second to last mistake that I end up seeing is players being too conservative with perks and or utility. This is something that I am tremendously guilty of until as of recently where I started to adopt it, hey, I may as well just use it mentality with this. I'd always end up having a perk or two or maybe even three in my inventory by the time the game ended or maybe if I died. But say theoretically there's 10 players left. If you're not entirely sure if your perks will run out before the game ends, don't worry too much about it. Don't stress about it. Just simply drop what you have. And if you end up having, say, do duplicates of the perks you end up using, that's totally fine and that's great. It can end up elongating a little bit of that, but it's better to use them in engagements where you may encounter a situation of combat compared to early game where you may actually have reason to be conservative with it. If you're in the wide open field and you're running for the zone and you have a ways to go, you're not necessarily going to need reinforced to combat stuns and concussions. Whereas late game in a small circle of say 10 people, that could be tremendously useful. So try not to be too conservative with those items of perks or utility maybe even healing. And the final thing we'll talk about deals with impatience and or overconfidence. This is probably the biggest thing that I see, especially in myself, when I get going and on a roll. If you're hitting streaks and pulling off a few kills in a very short period of time, you're probably gonna feel invincible, and rightfully so. You pulled off some really cool stuff, probably, but the clip you'll see in the background is a perfect example of this. I was clutching up a duos game with my friend that you may know, Ink Slasher, and cleaned the final few sets of squads all but one. Then it came down to a 1v2 situation for that final clutch moment. I initially went to go over and push them because they were camping again in that bathroom or the house, but upon his observation, which is unfortunately inaudible since I wasn't recording voice audio, but he ended up saying that they'd need to come to me. He observed that the zone was actually in my favor here at this one and they'd be pushed out of that house. So he talked me off the ledge of going full blown rushing the dudes and potentially ending up killing myself in the process. Truthfully, while I had one more cluster grenade, using it in a tight CQ QC engagement could have worked, but certainly isn't the best play. So falling back to reposition, I ended up being able to pull off the 1v2 to secure the clutch. Sometimes it is great to go head first fearlessly into an engagement, but also sometimes it's even better to think about the situation logically, reposition, and go from there. So make sure you're not too impatient or overconfident with it. Sometimes all you gotta do is just simply think, is this the best move? But that said, that's what we're gonna wrap it up here at this one. Just wanted to give you guys my input here on some ways to play Blackout that can correct some common mistakes. I'm not saying that I am by any means a professional Blackout player or anything like that, but I definitely feel like having three, four days played, I feel I understand the game enough to critique not only myself, but potentially offer up some unique tips that can help you guys maybe even improve your game in some select scenarios. But said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you guys like to see, firstly, more Blackout content like this? Secondly, what do you guys think of this? Do you think that there's anything that I may have missed in terms of mistakes players commonly make? And if so, what are your critiques on that and what would you offer up as any advice? That said, let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video though, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Blackout, multiplayer, and zombies. Anything related to Black Ops 4, we got you covered the best of all that. So, any video interest you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, whatever it is, link in the description below to check out those both. But thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.